I've shown you so far how to type in numbers, how to type in text, and how to type in dates. But I'm sure it's very likely that if you're coming to the program that you have data that's already been typed in somewhere else and you want to bring it in. For example, here I have essentially the same data that I typed in in the past lessons and I have it now in a spreadsheet. Let me show you how I can select this data. Notice I'm including the header row. I'm going to copy this and then go into a new data graph file. I can click anywhere I want, it doesn't really matter, and paste this data in. The, the, the program will basically import that data into this file and it interprets it. For example, it interpreted correctly the header row and populated those headers so I didn't have to retype them. It also has to do an interpretation of what the data type is. And you can see for the X and the Y, it appropriately determined that these, these were number columns. You can also confirm this over here by looking at the icons on the left-hand side. However, the date column was not imported as a date. That's something we need to assign. I can do this, again, using this handy gear menu. They have all sorts of shortcuts for actions on your data that we've created to help save you time. So if you click on this gear menu, it has the option to convert to a date column format. If I do that, uh, it doesn't really change much in terms of what you see, but you will notice that there's a little, uh, that little symbol there indicating that this is a date. And you'll notice that the icon is different here. Um, and you want to confirm that the formatting is proper. So you can always expand this object out, check the format, which here is a full date, month slash day slash year. And that's exactly what this data is. That all checks out. The other thing that I want to do is I want to, again, populate each one of these rows with the type of data that's associated with it. And I showed you this earlier. Well, we can go ahead and do this again using the gear menu, this time on the type column, and I will use the fill empty rows with previous non-empty row. But I want you to know that there is an option that, that you can get this menu, not just from the, clicking the gear here, but you can also right click on the column header itself and you will see fill empty rows with previous non-empty row. In fact, you get the same exact menu as if you clicked the gear menu. Let's go ahead and select this. That's going to populate now each of my rows with that prior text. Uh, I don't need this one, so I could just highlight that row and hit the delete key. But again, if you wanna practice moving around chunks of data here, I can select these rows, drag them to the right. If I wanna move them down one, I can just move this blue line down from the bottom one row. I can do the same for all the data if I would like to do that as well. Okay, now there's one detail I just wanted to point out to you that you may or may not have noticed. And that is when I brought this data in, I'm also showing the year. And when I first entered this in the example, uh, in the last video of showing the date format, I used a date format where I didn't have to type in the year. So it made it a lot quicker to just type the month and the day. I tried doing this in my spreadsheet. And what happens, if I just try typing in 2-6, for example, is it automatically formats this to show the day and then a text representation of the month. But that's not actually what I typed in. And if I double click on this, I then see the full date, including a year, but that's actually not the year that I wanted. I wanted 2020. So, okay, I realize I have to go ahead and type in the full day, month, year in order to get this. And then it does format correctly. But if I go back to this one and try it again, it maintains this formatting. So it's actually changed the format for that one individual cell. And I would have to go in, right click on this, go into the number format. And there is a way then to select date and go ahead and select this as my format. Uh, but this is the kind of thing that in Datagraph, you, you set a format once for the entire column and then the formatting is consistent. So for me, uh, I think being able to have the data in this format where if I know I'm always gonna have the year 2020 for these experiments, 
I can just type that in again as my fixed year format and then I only have to type in the month and the day and I specify the year in one place. Datagraph also has a fixed day format. So if you're typing time in for a particular day, you don't always want to have to type in the date in terms of the full date. That's a handy thing to be aware of. Um, Anyway, now we have data, we have either typed it in or we've pasted it in and we're ready to go ahead and start graphing.